When most people think about health, they usually think about exercise, diet, and sleep. But what if I told you that one of the most powerful levers you can pull is something that runs in the background of nearly every single cell in your body? Now this will sound familiar to you, but this is something called your circadian rhythm, the 24 hour biological clock that governs sleep, metabolism, hormones, energy, and even your mood. And if you learn how to align with it, you can radically improve your health performance and even your longevity. In this video, I'll be breaking down the key principles and science from Dr. Sachin Panda's book, The Circadian Code, with a few insights from none other than Andrew Huberman. I'll be showing you what you can use and what practices you can employ that is gonna help you enhance and optimize your circadian rhythm and therefore your overall health, well-being, and as I said, your longevity. But what exactly is your circadian rhythm? Your circadian rhythm is controlled by a master clock in your brain located in the hypothalamus just above the roof of your mouth. This master clock is also known as the suprachiasmatic nucleus or SCN for short. This clock takes in information from light and synchronizes this with what are called peripheral clocks in the rest of your body. Clocks in your liver, pancreas and gut muscles and nearly every single other cell. A peripheral clock are the tiny mechanisms in organisms and tissues such as the liver, pancreas, gut and muscles that regulate local functions like digestion, insulin release and muscle repair in sync with the master clock. These clocks control your metabolic rhythm, meaning the cycles of digestion, nutrient absorption and energy use that rise during the day and wind down at night. When everything is aligned, your body is in sync. Digestion works better, hormones release at the right times, and you get deep restorative sleep, and your energy levels are stabilized. However, when things are misaligned, you'll experience things like fatigue, poor sleep, unstable blood sugar levels, and a higher risk of long-term disease. And none of us, of course, want any of this. The signals that set this clock are something called Zeitgebers, or from the German translation, Time givers. A Zeitgeber is an external cue that helps to synchronize your circadian rhythm. In this video, I'm going to teach you about three of the primary Zeitgebers that we can use and how to use them so that you can optimize your circadian rhythm. And like I said, therefore, your overall health, energy, and also performance and longevity. First off, one of the most powerful Zeitgebers that we can use is simply light. Your suprachiasmatic nucleus, or your SCN, is directly connected to certain receptors in the back of your eye. The suprachiasmatic nucleus helps to synchronize our body's clock with the day-night cycle. It does this by receiving input from these melanopsin-containing cells, otherwise known as melanopsin-containing intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, which detect blue wavelength light. This is why you hear a lot about protection from blue light in the evenings. But blue light can also be really healthy for us to stay alert and time the release of things like cortisol to help us be alert during the daytime. So one of the main things that we can start to do that's gonna help us to really synchronize our circadian rhythm is getting early morning sunlight. Now, I don't mean staring into the sun, but I do mean being outside and not through a car window and things like that, or sunglasses, unless of course they're prescripted. Prescriptive glasses or contact lenses are also fine. But what this is gonna do is help us to set our clock for the day. You see, when our body understands what time of day it is, and that it's morning, it times the release of, like I said, cortisol and also melatonin in the evening to improve the quality of our sleep so that we can enter that deep and restorative sleep. We can also use artificial light. Indoor overhead lighting, especially cooler white light, isn't enough to set our circadian rhythm in the morning as it doesn't have the right light quality, high enough intensity or lux, but in the evening it can be very disruptive and delay our release of melatonin, meaning that we're not gonna get that good deep sleep. When your melatonin is suppressed by things like blue light, it can delay our body's clock, putting us out of sync and making it harder to fall asleep. What also matters is where the light is emitted from in our physical environment. For example, overhead light is more disruptive to the release of melatonin as opposed to low level light. This is because light from above hits the lower retina, which is highly sensitive to signals of daylight from the sky. This tells your brain it's daytime. Over millennia, our body has evolved this way to synchronize our circadian rhythm and clocks with the sun 
and the day-night cycles. But light from below, like candles, lamps, and warm-toned lighting, reaches the upper retina, which is less sensitive to these cues. This is why keeping lights low and dim in the evening is less disruptive to our circadian rhythm. So to summarize on our first Zeitgeber, get morning light into your eyes, make sure you're not exposed to too much blue light or overhead lighting in the evening so that our body can time the appropriate release of cortisol to keep us alert during the day and melatonin to allow us to fall asleep more easily. Light is one of the most important Zeitgebers, but the second one is just as important. And this is when you're eating and time-restricted eating. One primary bad habit that I see is very common among most people is how late they're actually eating food or consuming any calories for that matter. If you're eating late into the evening, your body is gonna think it's still daytime. It is still partaking in daytime functions. Digestion, insulin release, and other daytime metabolic functions remain active. And this will delay your sleep cycle and therefore your overall circadian rhythm. Unfortunately, as a result of this, this can cut off your REM sleep. The reason for this is the first half of the night, your sleep is primarily deep sleep. When your body's clock is delayed, you might be asleep, but you will be also still taking part in daytime functions and your sleep isn't gonna be able to do its proper job. Therefore, by the time that you finish with your daytime functions, your body will try and make up and enter deep sleep but this will be delayed. So usually your deep sleep quality isn't as good, but also it cuts off the end of the night, the second half of your sleep cycle, which is primarily REM sleep. Less REM sleep can be really bad for us. It can mean things like poorer memory, emotional imbalance and volatility, and also it will impact your overall recovery. Saturn Panda's research shows that eating in an eight to 12 hour window can really help to align our circadian rhythm. It gives our body a break, but also allows us to fall asleep faster and communicate to our body what time of day it is by, for example, routinely eating at specific times during the day. Eating in this window, unless you've of course been told otherwise by a medical professional, this of course is not advice, but simply supposed to be an educational video. Unless you've otherwise been told by a medical professional or your GP, eating in an eight to 12 hour window can help you to align your metabolism with your circadian rhythm. I implore everyone to do their research into their health practices and base their judgments on that also whilst communicating with a medical professional should you decide to make any changes in your life. But eating this window can also really benefit our glucose regulation, which can in turn reduce our metabolic strain. As I said, it can really help to stabilize your blood sugar levels. But why exactly is this important? You might hear this spoken about often, but to really get to grips with why this is important for circadian rhythm, we also need to understand why stabilizing our blood sugar levels is so important. Number one, Stable blood sugar levels means fewer energy crashes. It can also mean an overall better mood, sharper focus, and a lower risk of type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Eating in sync with your clock literally prevents your body from operating in a state of internal conflict. So personally, something I do is try to eat within an eight to 12 hour window. And outside of that window, I also try not to consume any calories, even through things like drinks. Of course, live your life the odd drink here and there and enjoying yourself is also important, but this is purely educational based on optimizing our circadian rhythm and optimizing our health if we were to be perfect as it were. So try to eat at routine times of day so you can communicate effectively to your body what time of day it is and also try to eat within an eight to 12 hour window. Again, not advice, but something I would do. Having periods of fasting can also be really beneficial to us overall. It gives our body a break and also when we enter a fast or a certain time of fast, it means that our body can start to focus on recovery as opposed to constantly digesting and processing food. I covered this in one of my other videos where I went on an 86 hour fast and I speak about the benefits of autophagy and ketosis. I'll put a link to this below in the bio. And finally, another very important and the final Zeitgeber that we're gonna speak about in this video is of course exercise, but not what and how you exercise, but of course when. This is all about timing, something that is massively overlooked when it comes to our health and fitness, but nonetheless a very powerful tool we can employ. Exercising during the day, especially in the morning or afternoon, helps your muscles take up glucose more efficiently. This reduces your blood sugar spikes and also helps to keep your energy levels stable. It also helps to anchor your circadian rhythm so your body expects activity during the day and recovery during the night. One important factor to note 
and why it's important to exercise during the morning or the afternoon as opposed to the evening, which is of course hard for a lot of people that work nine to five and choose to do whatever activity, whether that be cardio, CrossFit or bodybuilding or any form of weights in the evening, is that to prepare ourselves for sleep, our core body temperature must drop by approximately two degrees Celsius. When we exercise, our core body temperature increases, meaning that we're not properly preparing ourselves for a good sleep. Now, of course, you can leave a bit of a buffer, but ideally, try not to work out in the evening or at least late after you come back from a nine to five. Morning and afternoon is more effective. However, in this modern day and age, not so practical. Light and exercise is a really powerful combination. Pairing exercise and natural light in the morning is really beneficial for us. The movement boosts your circulation and energy whilst the light communicates to your suprachiasmatic nucleus what time of day it is and appropriately at times the release of cortisol so that you can improve your performance and sustain an overall alertness during the times you need to for whatever obligations you might have like your work or anything else that requires your focus and attention. Together, they really reinforce your circadian rhythm. Again, this means more alertness during the day and appropriate time melatonin release so you can enter that deep, restorative and much needed sleep. The circadian rhythm is not just about sleep, it's about how you communicate with your body and every single cell in your body what time of day it is. By getting morning sunlight, dimming and maintaining a low level of lighting in the evening, timing your eating and eating within a certain window and also timing of exercise can all help to synchronize your body with the day-night cycle and optimize your circadian rhythm. Through doing this, you can harness this ancient biological system to help you improve your overall health, performance, energy levels, and of course, your longevity. So tomorrow morning, step outside, get that natural light, exercise in either the morning or the afternoon, and start living in sync with your clock.